Welcome guys, welcome to this week's Q&A, oh. and I've got two questions that I'm going to cover today, and then a topic at the very end of this. Hopefully you guys enjoy these, make sure to leave your questions for next week's Q&A down below. What to do if you're following your macros and you hit your macros for the day, but you go over on calories? You keep eating. Is that, is that not it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Done. See you later. Uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> Assuming that you're talking about my fitness pal. So the way that my fitness pal is set up, for whatever reason, sometimes the calories and the macronutrients don't add up. If you're hitting your macros and your calories are slightly off, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you do hit your macros and you look and your calories are off by several hundred or more calories, something is wrong. So that would usually mean that something you entered didn't have macronutrient information. You can look at the actual nutritional information of the food that you log and say it's 500 calories, but there's no protein, carbs, or fats. That could be a reason. Sometimes the foods take into account fiber and they subtract fiber calories, so sometimes that's why they're off. Like I said, the big picture, if you're hitting your macronutrients consistently, don't worry too much if the calories are slightly off in your app, but if there's a huge difference and it's consistent, several hundred calories off, you might wanna double check and make sure the foods that you are entering are correct, so hopefully that helps. So now you're recording. Huh? You took me out of the video after my comment, huh? I, how do you know? I haven't edited it yet. I'm assuming you took me out. What if I don't? Well, you just. Do you want me to leave there. you in? You walked over there and pointed that. Well, obviously, and I gave a good answer. It's the next Q. I'm ready for that A. <laughs> what? What? Why do you keep filming me? <laughs> okay, so the next question, you yes. can answer this one. Do you have to eat after you work out? I work out at 8 p.m. and then I go to sleep. I don't like protein shakes. I don't feel good when I eat before bed. What are your suggestions? I believe you do need to work like eat right after. You, I'm guessing they're talking about the 45 minute window again. That anabolic window? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take from here. Was your answer? Yeah. You said you wanted answer. to answer it. No, I was answering the last one. I didn't say I was gonna answer this one. What if I don't know the answer to this one? Never really stuck to, like true to that. We, we mean, okay, working out makes you hungry. Eat when you're hungry. That's, I mean, at least how I work. So it doesn't necessarily have to be within that window. Your body isn't, I don't know, stuck to like a time schedule, you know? It's like, oh, gotta be at work. I would recommend um, the only thing if you are working out and then going to bed, that's a long time without any sort of food. I mean, if you're super duper uncomfortable eating after you work out and then going to bed, don't do it. I mean, if it's something that makes you really uncomfortable in the long run, I don't see a benefit to it. But have seen some research that shows uh, having some protein or some type of food before you go to bed is helpful because your body recovers and your muscles repair in your sleep. If it is possible to eat something, then go ahead. But really what's going to make the most difference long term is your consistency and your adherence to your intake and your goals over a long period of time. So it's not necessarily the meal timing or that post-workout anabolic window, but it's whether or not you stuck to your macro goals or your calorie goals or your diet or whatever it is over time. And that's when the results come. My, my first suggestion, if you do want to get something in, is liquid calories are usually the easiest to get in, so some type of shake. Uh, I love having oatmeal before I go to bed because it makes me feel yummy in my tummy. It's It really is gonna come down to what's going to work best for you long term, and I would recommend following what you can enjoy and what you can keep doing months and months down the road. So if you don't wanna eat before you go to bed, don't sweat it. If you feel like duty in your workouts and you're really, really hungry in the middle of the night or in the morning, then you might need to eat something. So hopefully that helps. There's a puppy sneezing party. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> All right, let's go for a walk. All right guys, so for this last part, I wanted to do a little discussion. I wanted to talk about binge eating. So I hadn't talked about it in a while because I honestly haven't really struggled with it in quite some time. And I don't really have like a specific answer as to why, but I do know a lot of it is because my habits have changed. So my eating habits, how I see food, basically like my rituals have changed. And I feel like a lot of it relates to how you change your habits as far as like going to the gym. So I have a lot of people, <laughs> bless this pooping. I have a lot of people ask me, 
how you stay motivated to go to the gym. And it's not necessarily because you stay motivated, because I'm not always motivated. I don't go into the gym feeling great all the time. I don't get excited about workouts all the time, but I do it because I've made it a habit. I've essentially made a habit of not centering my life around food. I've made it a habit to not make myself feel guilty if I do overeat, thus getting back into that cycle of guilt, restriction, overeating, restriction, <laughs> and that kind of stuff. So I've made it a habit to focus more on life and I've also made it a habit to eat a cookie if I want a cookie and if I want two cookies then I'll eat it because I know that the stress of worrying about it is worse for me than actually eating the cookie in the first place. Um, it's kind of like whenever you do restrict certain foods from your diet, the more that you restrict them, the more that you want them. So the more that I try to not binge eat or to not overeat, I think the more that I am inclined to actually do it, if that makes sense. So. Last night, I can use this as an example, last night I um, I had all my food, I had hit my macros for the day, everything was good, and then I ended up eating um, a full bag of those hippies and like a four serving bag um, and several extra Girl Scout cookies. And I think that the worry of whether or not I was going to do it would have been worse um, had I tried to tell myself, don't eat it, you shouldn't eat this, you're a terrible person if you do eat it. And so I just did, and then I just moved on with my life, so it wasn't a binge. I think that had I tried to... Yeah, it's nice. I think that had I tried to restrict further and make myself feel guilty for actually eating these things, it probably would have sent me uh, further down the rabbit hole and I probably would have gone upstairs and had more food. Probably would have eaten twice as much as that. So I don't know if any of this makes sense, but just a few thoughts that I wanted to get out as far as um, where I'm at with my relationship with food and myself and my body and this whole journey. Um, I just don't handle these occasions like I used to. You know, last night, uh, had it been a couple years ago, I probably would have overcompensated with more cardio or more workouts this week, uh, even though I'm injured, I would have restricted a little bit more. I probably would have jumped into some type of cutting process, but I'm not. I'm just moving on with my life and everything is good, so that's that. I said, I hope this makes sense. I just wanted to get some thoughts out. Um, I would love to talk more about this if you guys have specific questions. Uh, it's really, really something that I'm passionate about, which is overcoming these struggles. So yeah, leave them below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all on Monday.